One of the greatest things about works of fiction is you're not limited to things that can be found in the boring real world. Want your otherwise perfectly normal human to learn how to fly? <laughs> Go for it! How about something crazy like sticking an entire city in the sky? Sure, it couldn't be simpler. This of course goes for animals as well, as creators are free to imagine any number of strange beasties and weird hybrids that they think would work for the world they're trying to create. Sometimes, though, that creativity leads to things that are truly the stuff of nightmares. With creatures so horrific, they'll burn themselves into your retinas for life and make you never fully trust your beloved pets ever again. We've gathered together a few of the animals in gaming that we think are the worst to look at or think about and put them all in one list so now you can feel just as uncomfortable as we do. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 creepiest animals in video games. Number 10. Zombie Dogs Resident Evil Series there are a lot of things in the Resident Evil universe that could definitely be called creepy, but I would hesitate to call most of them animals. That being said, there are some on occasion, but they'll typically be relatively straightforward things like snakes or bigger snakes. However, there's also the series staple spooky creature, the zombie dog, which is probably one of the creepiest animals to ever grace the gaming world. One of the most iconic scenes in the the entire franchise is when the zombie dogs jump through the windows in the very first game, and it's one that still puts players on edge to this day. This wasn't helped by the fact that in the remake, the developers changed when the dogs jumped in, so people still didn't know when to expect it and presumably threw their controllers in fear just the same way as they did when they were younger playing it for the first time. Capcom seemingly weren't content to leave Dogkind alone after the first game though as mutated pooches show up in several of the Resident Evil titles with varying degrees of infection and spook factor. They may not be all that much by today's standards, especially in their original iteration, but they were the stars of one of gaming's earliest jump scares and one of the most memorable ones as well. Number 9. The Deer Clops Don't Starve for a game whose central premise is pretty much laid out in its title, Don't Starve sure has a lot more threats contained within it than simply not getting enough to eat. Mobs and monsters are the order of the day in this world, and one of the most startling of them is known as the Deer Clops. Exclusively encountered during the winter, this huge cryptid often only announces its presence with a menacing low roar before rocking up to ruin the player's night, camp, and internal organs, probably in that exact order. This monster's main goal is to wreck as many structures as it can, so it's smart to lead it away from anything important, if possible. Of course, this means it will more than likely end up going after the player instead, and with its devastating swiping attacks and proximity-based sanity drain, it likely won't end all that well, whatever you choose to do. If skilled enough, players can dodge the deer clops and just wait until it despawns at the end of the season, but if they've had to abandon a well-stocked base to do so, I don't fancy their chances going forward. Number 8. The Guardian Ape – Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Considering it's a From Software game, perhaps it comes as no surprise that many of the animals in Sekiro are a bit scary and are pretty much always hell-bent on killing you. One that truly sticks in the mind for its creep factor, though, is the Guardian Ape not so much for how it looks, but for what happens during its boss fights. As expected, this is a tough battle, but persevere and take advantage of the sword already in its neck to behead the thing, and the beast finally falls. Presumably for good, right? Uh, well, thinking that was your first mistake. Unfortunately, this isn't the end of the road for poor Sekiro, because just when he thinks the job is done, what should wake up freshly rested and ready for battle, but a puppet 
Decapitated Ape Corpse. This is when things truly start to get freaky, as now the horrible simian moves in jerky, unsettling motions, attacking the shinobi with the now liberated sword in one hand and its own head in the other. It uses this for a truly disturbing AoE death scream that sees it place its head back on top of its neck stump. The end of the fight brings what is probably the worst news of all, though. This all happened because there was some horrible parasite living in the ape's body. Ah, lovely. Number 7. The Eel. Super Mario 64. Most of Mario's enemies are more scary conceptually than they are physically, if you stop to think about it. But then, there are the eels. These slippery underwater fellas have gone by various names over the years, including Unorgi and, most recently, More, and are always at least a little bit scary, as they tend to move much more quickly than you'd expect and have a gaping mouth full of pointy teeth. They also like to jump out from nowhere most of the time. The one that probably most sticks in the minds of players, though, is the eel from Super Mario 64, as it's the first place such a creature shows up, and as such was most people's first experience of its nasty nature. At first, the eel seems pretty content to just hang out in its little hole, occasionally poking its head out and taking in the scenery. If Mario wanders too close, though, wham! Suddenly, the eel lunges out out and opens its mouth wide in an attempt to swallow the hapless plumber whole. The worst thing is, though, this jump scare is unavoidable, because the creature has to be lured out into the open in order to grab the star that's on its tail. It was bad enough when this thing was just blocking the path to the pirate ship earlier, but seeing just how big it is compared to Mario makes things so much worse. Number 6. The Keizu Monster Hunter series. With a name like Monster Hunter, you know what you're getting into with these games, or at least I'd certainly hope so. However, none of the creatures in the whole series take the monster part of the title quite as literally as the Keizu does. If approached from the rear, it looks like your bog-standard wyvern, and you may be wondering how it could possibly be bad enough to be on this list, especially given some of the other creatures it shares screen time with. Well, dear viewer, I ask now for you to direct your attention to its face. Its horrible, horrible face. With a fleshy, elastic neck and a mouth packed full of far too many teeth, there's something so disturbing about this phallic monstrosity that I can't quite put into words. You wouldn't think something without a head could be as spooky as this, but I guess I was proved wrong before in Sekiro, wasn't I? As the Keizu has no eyes, at least as far as I can tell by trying my hardest not to look at it for longer than necessary, it's nearly blind, instead hunting its prey with a combination of a strong sense of smell and electric shocks. It can also climb walls thanks to its suction pad-like feet, and you know what? I think that's more than enough for me, thanks. I don't need to know any more, and neither do you. Let's move on. Number 5. The Man-Eater Boar, Bloodborne. Let's be honest with ourselves here, none of the creatures in Bloodborne are particularly pleasant to look at, and nine times out of ten, they're even worse to deal with. There's therefore a case to be made for each and every one of the animal-like ones to be on this list, but hidden amongst all of the long-fingered aliens and macaroni monsters is the truest horror of them all, the man-eater boars. The first of these the player encounters is in the central Yarnum Aqueduct but they'll continue to pop up now and then over the course of the game. And at this point, I know what you're thinking. It's not all that bad, it's just a massive pig. Well, I see that and raise you about 40 additional eyes. This horrible mutated version of the big pig is found in the latter half of the game is not only tougher to fight, but to look at as well. It's like what would happen if Pumba starred in The Fly and is every bit as horrible as that sounds. There's something about the fact that these boars are almost normal but have such a grotesque mutation that makes them so much worse than all of the other creatures in the game. And as we said at the start of the entry, when you're talking about Bloodborne, that is really saying something. Number 4. Centaurs Fallout 
Terrible animals are a dime a dozen in Fallout, what with all of the Cazadors and Rad Scorpions, and of course the ever-terrifying Death Claws. But even with all of these to choose from, perhaps the weirdest out there are the Centaurs, which are unfortunately not as fantasy branded as their name would suggest. These are a bit of an anomaly, as rather than existing because of the titular nuclear fallout, they're actually mutations that were created thanks to the forced evolutionary virus. The Master, from the earlier games, decided to combine parts of various different animals, including humans, to see what would happen. The result? Unsurprisingly terrible things. I really don't think he needed to run that experiment to figure that out personally, but uh, never mind. Because centaurs are essentially a mixing pot of animal DNA, they can differ wildly in their appearance, but they tend to be grouped into either the one- or two-headed variety, depending on which part of the wasteland they originate from. None are pleasant to look at, though, often featuring far too many limbs, bony protrusions, and horrible waving red tentacles. No one in this universe has a particularly good fate waiting for them, but it's hard not to feel bad for the folks that were never given a chance and instead got turned into this. Number 3. The Phase Spider Matriarch – Baldur's Gate 3 Horrendous spiders are, unfortunately, a recurring theme in video games, and are perhaps a bit predictable at this point. But the reason they keep getting used as nightmare fuel is because, boy, do they work. A lot of these creepy crawlies make even those who don't normally have a problem with spiders wince, primarily because they're not only awful to look at, but also tend to be the size of your average family car. One of the more recent offerings of many-legged terror is the Phase Spider Matriarch and her many, many spiderlings in Baldur's Gate 3. Found in the Whispering Depths, this troublesome arachnid is quite a difficult foe, especially for the first act of the game, with nasty attacks and abilities. These include Ethereal Jaunt, which allows her to teleport around the place, because why not make a spider even worse by allowing it to appear behind you at any moment? As with all battles, there are many strategies that can make her easy to deal with, including smashing her spider eggs before combat or pushing her into a pit. But even so, this is yet another spider enemy that I think the world would have been better off never having to clap eyes on in the first place. Number 2. Head Crabs – Half-Life so far, the majority of the animals we've looked at are scary partly due to how big they are. But here to prove that size doesn't matter is me, Tiny Peter. No, sorry, hang on, what am I saying? Uh, here to prove that you don't have to be large to be terrifying are the head crabs from the Half-Life series. These horrible alien creatures make up for their size by being all sorts of disturbing, scuttling around on their four spindly legs and leaping at anyone unfortunate enough to be within ten feet in an effort to get immediately acquainted with their brain stem. It's not just how they look that makes them awful either, or even the horrible screeches the poison variety make. No, the worst thing about them is what exactly they do once they've latched on to their host. As if breaking into the head of their victim wasn't enough, the head crabs will then proceed to turn them into a zombie zombie, doomed to shuffle around the place until they meet the business end of Gordon Freeman's crowbar. Perhaps worst of all, though, is that it's obvious the host retains some semblance of consciousness as they are constantly screaming for help from under their fleshy alien hats. And that's me officially put off my dinner. How about you? Let me know in the comments below. And number one, the Reaper Leviathan. Subnautica. If you've never played or heard of Subnautica and don't have a fear of the ocean, you might not think a game with such a pleasant and bright start could harbour anything too terrible. No pun intended with, with the harbour thing. If you do get hands-on with Subnautica though, and didn't originally have a fear of the ocean, the Reaper Leviathan is sure to change that in a heartbeat the first time you encounter it. These creatures are likely to be the first of the bigger enemies that appear, as they tend to lurk around the deeper waters of the early game areas. They're instantly aggressive and have massive black eyes, mouths full of pointy teeth, and a horn on the top of their head, ideal for ramming into their prey. 
Even when they roar to announce that they've spotted something, they still seem to have a nasty habit of appearing out of absolutely nowhere to grip the player and their poor submersible with their big, meaty face claws. The worst news of all, though, is that the Reaper Leviathan is only the tip of the massive ocean-dwelling iceberg, and that bigger and better- no, sorry, bigger and worse things are waiting for the player even deeper in the darkness. Yes, it turns out that alien oceans are host to even more mysteries than our own. But to be honest, that doesn't make me feel any better about paddling so deep into our own seas that my feet don't touch the floor anymore. Ugh, we're talking, you know, two, three feet in my case.